Hi all, Lee Veris here with another Phototech Tuesday, exploring photo techniques, equipment, software, creativity, travel, and more. Today I'm looking at a useful technique for desaturating shadows in Lightroom. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, the advent of digital capture technology has revolutionized photography, bringing about numerous improvements. However, there are instances where digitally captured images exhibit an exaggerated level of colorfulness, which may seem slightly unnatural to those accustomed to traditional film photography. This phenomenon can be attributed to the way color saturation increases alongside contrast, and even standard rendering presets indirectly enhance saturation through a global RGB composite curve intended to enhance contrast. Consequently, as contrast increases, there is a corresponding rise in saturation throughout the entire image, resulting in unrealistic, colorful shadow values. In our natural perception of color, saturation gradually diminishes to zero as shadows approach black. By addressing this tendency to heighten color in the shadows when contrast is, in is increased, it is possible to achieve a more authentic representation of depth and three-dimensionality in the image. Now let me show you what I mean using this image. So here we have uh, a photograph captured during one of our uh, tours to uh, Venice for Carnival. And of course, we have a costumer here in full regalia, very colorful costume. Uh, what I'm working with here is actually the JPEG right out of the camera. And I was using uh, Velvia uh, film simulation. So this is the most saturated in-camera JPEG. And it still has a fair amount of detail um, pretty much everywhere. Uh, and I'd like to enhance the the extra detail in the costume for sure. So typically what I'll do with these types of things is I'll just crank that texture and clarity slider first just to see what that does. And you know, it, it definitely enhances all the little details here. Let's zoom in just a little bit here. And then I'll, I'll work the clarity as well, which also kind of enhances the kind of three dimensional look of this. I don't see anything un unhappy happening. Uh, the shadows have gotten deeper and um, yeah, we could we could maybe bump the exposure just a little bit. It's feeling a little underexposed now. Maybe we'll back up. Let's fit this in the, in the image here. And uh, yeah, so th that clarity and texture added a lot of contrast and darkened, it sort of deepened the shadows, uh, which is you know perhaps now it's getting a little a little dark looking i'm going to uh, increase the shadow values here just a little bit and we may increase that more now all of this move i've increased the brightness i've increased the the uh, the contrast using the texture and clarity and it's it's now kind of gotten even more saturated in the highlight values and the shadow values, if we if we check, if I just move my cursor around in these dark values, we can kind of see, as expected, the red channel. If we look up here in the in the histogram area, I'm down here under her her dress in the in the against the wall. It is a red wall, but it's very dark there, and we still have a lot of red uh, in the red channel. It's 10.9. The green's 3.1, and the blue is 0.7. So it's almost no blue there. But what we expect with regular vision is that as tones get darker, the color becomes less and less and less until it approaches absolute neutral when it hits black. So we're, we're not at black yet, but our values, because of the way we've adjusted this image, our shadow values are just too colorful. They're too red. So I'd like to find a way to desaturate that. And... Uh, to do that, we're going to be using the mask panel. So I'll go up here. Here's the mask panel. I'll open that up. Uh, and what we're going to do is a sort of a global adjustment. And so we're going to use the range shadows here. Uh, we're going to use luminance range to target the shadows. So um, 
if I click on this luminance range here, I uh, now I'm presented um, with a dialog and an eyedropper. And the value that I click on will become uh, the targeted value. So I'm going to find the darkest value here, which again, in the, um, in the histogram, you can see that this value is pretty much at black, but it's got way more red. 0.9 in the red channel, 0.1 in the green channel, 0.6 in the blue channel. So there's, there's almost 10 times more red in here than certainly than there is green. And we'd like this to be um, pretty much the same in all three channels. So it should be neutral because it's really, really dark. And so it shouldn't have any saturation at all. So I'm going to click on that. And um, you can kind of see now that I, I, I'm visualizing the targeted values which are turning gray here. <laughs> now I changed the overlay color and it's useful to show you how to do that because by default this the overlay is red. Right. And then it makes it really hard to see against this red image where those targeted values are. So I could pick, you know, green or uh, what I often do is just pick this white uh, default. And that gives me a kind of a gray color, which is um, I, I find useful most of the time when targeting these shadow values. So let me put the color pick away. And so now that we have established what we're going to target you can kind of see the range displayed here the the very dark area this is the fully targeted values which are uh, 10 and lower so everything that is, hits a value of 10 in the rgb values and lower is going to be fully targeted for this uh, luminance range adjustment so i actually only want to target the very darkest values and i want a smooth transition so i'm going to take this all the way down to one. So only values that are one and lower are fully targeted. And the other values were sort of ramping off. So um, I'm going to, I think I'll just I'll stretch out this little area. We're going to go from about 40, 42, 43, something like that to one. That's a transition now. Till we get down to one when it's fully targeted between here and a level of 43 it ramps off until it's not targeting anything so now only values that are lower than 43 are showing up with this gray color now here are our sliders what are we going to do we're going to reduce the saturation so let me just take the saturation slider all the way down just so we can see what's happening and right away you can see that the shadows now have gotten a lot less colorful and they're sort of grayed out um, we can see the, the on and off effect by just clicking on this little eye up here in the mask and if i click on it, it takes the that desaturation away and we can see now the color in the shadows I let go and now it brings back that gray color and looking at this back and forth there's a thing in in lightroom Lightroom doesn't do this as nicely as Photoshop, actually. It actually makes the gray areas look a little lighter. Uh, and it should be the opposite. If I do this in Photoshop, um, I don't see this effect. But for some reason, the way the, the, the color space, the working space in Lightroom works, when I desaturate the shadows fully like this, it does get, it seems to get lighter, which is not what I'm going for. So I'm going to take the shadow slider and reduce that and you can kind of use this sometimes to enhance the contrast in your image further by extra deepening of the shadows now let's just tech, check i'm going to look for the brightness level here let me let me zoom in just a little bit here I'm going to zoom in just so we can kind of see this a little easier and i'm going to click on that eye to take the effect off temporarily so that's the original color. Now that's the desaturated color. Original, desaturated. You can kind of see, especially in these areas here, uh, what it's doing. It's, it's adding sort of an extra sense of depth to this region and adding a little extra uh, kind of darker contrast. But it's also desaturating the colors now. 
in practice, you don't necessarily have to go all the way desaturated. You know, if it looks a little better to take some of the saturation back up, that's okay too. So I'm not going to go all the way down. But this still is, is doing something useful that, that makes the image look a little less colorful in the shadows, and that gives it a sense, a, a little more three-dimensionality. Um, so, and you can kind of play around with it, like whether you're going to reduce the exposure even more, or darken it down just a little bit more or not. Um, and you'll find, especially with these very colorful images, that if everything is too colorful, then it might as well have nothing be colorful. So you want some, some contrast in the image, then consider desaturating this, the shadows. Okay, let's, let's zoom back out. And again, taking off that, that uh, desaturated shadows, you can kind of see the effect. And I'm perhaps exaggerating this a little bit. Maybe we can just put some color back, a little bit more color back in the shadows. The other thing, I'm kind of feeling like this wall now has gotten too gray. But I do like the... Uh, the desaturation in, in the figure and around the very deep shadows. So I'm going to use another technique to um, further constrain this desaturating effect to just the costumer. And uh, the way to do that is I'm going to use the intersect mask function. So we have these three little dots here. I click on that. Now I can intersect the mask with another mask, which means I'm once I start painting with the brush, I can focus the this desaturation into the area just in the in the costumer, just around the costumer. So I'll select brush, and now we'll brush into. The, now you'll see how it it the desaturation came off the image, but it's now being revealed in the area around the costumer. So I'm going to take into the into the costume. Uh, I'm I'm going full density, full uh, flow here. So I'm just painting this effect in, and as I get down in these shadow areas, I'm just going to kind of cruise over, overlap the, the, the figure a bit to put some of that into the, into the floor here. And I just want to especially make sure that these areas around the, the costume have gotten that desaturation effect. Okay, and that's that's the finished uh, effect there. Again, let's just double check, hide it. And it's a very, fairly subtle effect, but I am um, deepening the shadows and desaturating them and it makes it look a little more natural. Well, that's all for today. Be sure and hit that subscribe button and the little bell, and you'll be notified whenever I publish something new. And I'll see you in the next Phototech Tuesday.